Hi, welcome to another Cardano Tech Coding Tutorial. This is the channel where we talk about the tools and technologies which make our development journey easier on Cardano. Well, in my last video, which you should totally watch if you haven't already, I started making a Discord bot in JavaScript which is able to verify the wallet addresses of all users in our Discord server. As part of my research for this particular video, I found out that there are two professional services offering Discord verification bots on Cardano. But before we can start talking about programming in this particular video, we'll have to talk about how we are going to make the wallet verification thing work. It's time for some theory. Largely, you can implement wallet verification using two different ways. The first method is the data signing method which works using something called asymmetric key cryptography. This is the exact same method which is used to sign transaction on a blockchain. But instead of signing transactions, you are just signing data to verify the ownership of a particular wallet. Well, the dust method works something like this. So you have submitted your wallet X for verification, right? How about you take out this randomly generated amount of ADA from your wallet and then put it back into your own wallet. And like all other transactions, this transaction is also going to be publicly viewable on the blockchain. So I can verify if you really did that or not. And since this number is completely randomly generated, there is no chance in hell that the owner of this wallet would just randomly send this amount of ADA to their own wallet without a reason. Well, this is how I know you own this particular wallet. I know what you guys are thinking, right? The data sign method obviously feels superior, so we'll go ahead with that. Well, kind of. You see, the data sign method only came after we had browser extension based wallets on Cardano. Before that, everyone used the dust method for verification. Also, using only the data sign method would not include all the wallet users. Therefore, I will go ahead with the dust method and maybe I'll refactor my code in future to have an option of both dust and data sign method. Currently, we have a Discord bot which responds to its button being pressed by opening a pop-up for the user where they can enter their wallet address. Inside the config file, we'll be adding our block frost key for the preview net. If you don't know how to make a block frost key, you can check the starting of this particular video. After that, we need to install a library using npm i node fetch and then we'll be initializing a few variables. Now within our button handler function, we will also be looking for the modal submit interaction. As soon as we get a modal submit interaction, we'll be sending a reply to the user telling them that their address has been submitted. Let's have a look at this function. This function helps us in sending ephemeral messages to the user. Ephemeral messages are only viewable by a single user. Once the private message is sent, control is handed over to the verify data function. Let's have a look at it. This function first extracts the submitted address and then runs a check on the validity of the submitted address. After that, it checks if the user is already present in the queue or not. The getStick function is just a helper function which uses the BlockFrost API to return the answer. If everything is fine, then the function adds the user in the queue and then checks if the user or the address are already verified and present in the database. Now that we have established the unverified status of both the user and the address, we instantiate two variables. The random amount variable, it is the amount of ADA that the user needs to send to their own wallet for the dust method and then the call time whose use will be revealed later. An ephemeral message is sent to the user asking them to complete the transaction and then the verify wallet function is called after sleep time. This should be around 30 minutes on the mainnet. Now our sleep time amount of time has passed and hopefully the user has submitted the transaction. First we get the list of all transactions which are present in a block minted after the call time variable and then check to see if either of them satisfy the uh, dust data conditions. If none of those transactions satisfy it, we call the failure function. Otherwise, we call the suck function. You can see that the get transaction function is using the block frost API to return the desired data. Now comes the most important part. How do we verify a transaction? On Cardano, each transaction is a mapping of inputs to outputs. For a transaction to be considered valid, all the inputs of a transaction should have the same stake address and be equal to the stake address of the address submitted inside the pop-up. Well, the other condition is that there should be at least one output of the transaction which has the address equal to the submitted address and should have the ADA quantity equal to the random ADA number provided earlier. You can see this logic being implemented inside the verify function which uses the block frost API again for fetching the transaction inputs and outputs. Now, only our suck and failure function are left. Let's check them out. The failure function just removes the person from the queue and tells the user that the verification failed. The, the suck function on the other hand adds the wallet uh, and user key pair in the database. After that it removes the user from the queue and then it informs the user about well, it. Well now we have gone through all the functions individually so you can see what my final button.js file looks like.
Also, you can see what my index.js file looks like as well. Now, all that is left to do is to test out this bot. So, I'll be running this bot. And now, I'll try to verify my wallet against it. So, it is asking me to input the wallet and I'll input the address for my NAMI wallet. So, it has given me a random amount to submit. So, that is what I'm going to send. Okay, so oh, I've, I've submitted my transaction and now I'm waiting for it to complete. So let's try to verify it again and see if it is, if, if our verification queue is working fine. So it is again giving me a pop-up. Okay, so you can see right that it is checking that I'm already in the queue, so it is not allowing, allowing me to have another verification. Now we, we'll just have to wait for one or 1.5 minutes. So, so I've just got a message that the wallet verification was successful. Let's go back to uh, our text editor. Let's have a look at all the files. So you can see that I have this file called database.db. I'll print out the content of that file. So you can see that it only has one verified wallet currently in it. And it only has a stake address and the ID of my Discord. And then try to verify it again. So you can see that it knows that the user is already there, right? So I think all the functionalities are working great. So we have reached the end of this particular video. If you really want me to implement the data sign method as well, then you can put it in the comment and I will do that in a later video so that you can feel like a cryptography hacker man and feel like you really have some cryptography knowledge. Until then, take care. Bye bye. Have a fabulous weekend.